There, now. Hi, uh, my name is Barry Burns, and I am here with Miss T uh, Tyra, uh, Tyra, Tierra Graves. And we are taking part in a racist, racial interview section that we're having here at TSU. It's mainly for a outside uh, company that's doing this. But uh, we're doing this now as our first interviews. So, Miss Tiara, how are you? Let's start there. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you You're doing? doing good. I'm doing very well. Matter of fact, what is your name? What, let me give you a... Tiara. Tiara Long Graves. That is my name. Tiara. What's the last Alon. middle name? Alon. Alon. That's beautiful. And uh, where are you originally from? Originally from Sacramento, California. That's northern, not southern. It's six hours away from LA and San Diego. It's northern California, Sacramento. Okay. So you're a valley girl? Uh, I guess you could call me that. <laughs> like gag me with a spoon. <laughs> okay. Uh, and where do you currently live? Where do you live now? In Houston, Texas. Big old Texas. Big old Texas. Is that because you're here at as a student at TSU? Yes, it is. All oh, right. And after your graduation of TSU, where do you plan on going? Um, I don't know, actually. I haven't thought too deep into that. But I like Houston. But I think by then, um, I'll pick somewhere else. Hot dog, young, free, and fancy free. <laughs> I'm loving it. All right, so can you tell me a little bit about your family, your parents, your siblings, extended family? Give us a little background of who Tierra, how did Tierra become Tierra? Tierra became Tierra because my mom, uh, Teresa Rain, she is. Well, her she, her parents were her dad was in the um, so my grandpa was in the um, in the army and the military so they moved around a lot. I know they lived in Greece for a while, um, and then they moved to um, Sacramento when she was about fifteen. And um, my dad had already grew up there. He was born in Philadelphia. I'm not sure. I don't know where my mom was born. That's probably something I should ask her. <laughs> I remember she told me. I don't know. But, um, so my parents met in, Sa in Sacramento, and they lived there um, up until they graduated high school. They got married right after they graduated. Um, but then they moved around, and they were, the way they described their life is like, they were like, that couple like went on trips and uh cruises and traveled out the country. My dad was in the Navy, so they did travel a lot. Um, I know, I think they had my brother, I have a brother, Troy, and my brother, my sister, Tila. Um, me, my brother's 28, my sister's 27, I'm 19, so big gap. Um, but I know when they had my brother and my sister, they were living in San Jose at the time, or maybe they moved there. I'm not really sure. I don't get a lot of details. I just know they lived this wonderful life before I was born. <laughs> um, but they were living in San Jose at the time, um, and then they had me in 1997. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I am the, the end of the 90s, baby. Okay. Um, and then I think about a year or two after that, my parents got divorced and um, we moved, my dad moved back to Sacramento first and then um, then eventually my mom did. And um, so my sister knew my parents as together. I did not, I never seen my parents together. Um, but to me, it wasn't anything bad. Like I hear all these stories about divorced kids and stuff, but to me, it's just something normal, I guess. Um, yeah, it was something normal, so I just grew up with them, and my extended family, um, I know my mom's side, a lot of them are from Georgia, um, I've only met them one time, um, as far as like uncles and stuff, I know them, um, my dad's side in Sacramento, um, I know them, <laughs> so that's me and my family. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Um... So you grew up with your mother? Yes, and my sister. My brother moved and lived with my dad when he was 16, so I was like 
young. I was I was little, not little, little, but maybe like nine, ten, somewhere around there. So you know a little bit about living. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Okay. Out. My sister moved out right after she graduated high school, so I've been just by myself for a long so time. So basically, your mother and uh, your mother and you, like my mother and my and I. So, and all and all what that means because that's <laughs> Except a, I'm pretty sure yeah. me and my mom have way more fights than you your mom just because I'm a girl <laughs> uh, my my mother and I, oh wait I didn't even talk about that <laughs> we didn't like each other at all oh lord oh god and that's a whole nother issue but we won't even touch that okay if you had to categorize yourself in a few sentences what would you say if others had an opportunity to characterize you in a few sentences, what would they say? I think both myself and others would say I'm a pretty friendly person. I am very outspoken, outgoing, um, very driven, um, caring, you know, all the good stuff. All the good all stuff. All the good stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> a little crazy, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> We'll find out some of the bad <laughs> stuff in a minute here. If I can surely get down to these good questions here. And why did you decide to come here today and participate in this project? What issue incident encouraged you your participation? I decided to do this because I think it's very interesting to um, hear the day-to-day person's um, view on particular uh, topics like this because you hear people in the media, they have a voice, but, you know, um, they have a voice on a different aspect, I guess you would say, Mm -hmm. whereas the day-to-day person um, doesn't have a voice, so it's rare that you really hear unless, you know, you and your friends are talking about it. So um, I decided to do this because I think it's very interesting and just personal experiences that I've had. Um, I just, I've talked to some people that have had the same experiences, so, um, yeah. (laughs) Okay. So what is the experience or experiences that you wanna share with us today? When did they occur? Where did it, where did it occur? And who was involved in the event? Police, white folk, black folk, whatever. Well, I think the first time I, I can't really say, let me start by saying, I can't really say I've experienced full-fledged racism where someone's called me the N-word and was like, go to H-E-W-H-6 with your black soap. Like, Mm -hmm. I've never had anything directly forceful as in that sense. Um... Like I said, I'm from Sacramento, California, and the city in Sacramento is Antelope, where I grew up, only Antelope. That's why I moved out here to Houston, (laughs) because I needed something different. But Sacramento in general is, or maybe even California in general, is very, very diverse, Um, but particularly my city that I grew up in. So you get black, white, Asian, Mexican, things you don't even know (laughs) what you like. I don't even know what you're going on, but okay. Um, so it's just a, you don't just see one particular race go against another or anything like that. I mean, here and there, I mean, games or whatever, but, um, it's very diverse. So I, I never felt like, I never felt like there was one particular, particular group that hated us or anything like that. I always knew I was black. It was no indication. Clearly you can tell. Um, you probably are asking yourself, well, what is she? What is she mixed with da, da, da. No, I'm not mixed with anything um, that I know of. Um, to be frankly honest, my father is actually adopted, so I don't know much about his side of the family, but what my parents taught me and what they installed in me is that I grew up as a black woman. That's what I am. There's no different. I, that's what I've grown up. That's how I've grown up. That's who I am. I was never raised in any other form. I um, was always raised as a black woman, and I am black. My family is black. Um, so with that being said, um, 
I think the first time I really had something that kind of hit me was when um, me and one of my good friends, like maybe I was in middle school, we were walking, <clears throat> we were walking down the street to go home because we had no car. So uh, we were walking down the street and it was um, a group of like darker skinned girls and I was and my friend, she was darker skinned. And they had, they didn't even look her way or anything. They just were like straight looking at me and where it was like straight disgust and like, like anger was over mm. them. And I was mm. very confused and I'm so just, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. And I was just very confused. And I turned around and I was like, you know them? Or do I know them? And she was like, no, they're looking at that, looking at you because you're light skinned. And I was like, what? And uh, it just always, I just always remember that incident because I felt like that was like my first time where I noticed I was light skinned mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. from an outsider. Mm -hmm. I knew I was light skinned, light skin. Of course. Skin. Who of was course. it? Who was it? Who was it? Who was looking at you? It was a group of girls that were just like, I didn't know them. They didn't know me. They loved just, ones with color, loved ones without color. That's how I say that's Loved how ones with color. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so it just kind of, I, I don't know, it just kind of always stuck with me. So as, um, as I got older, um, actually when me and that same girl that I was with, um, as time went on, she said one time, we I don't know what we were doing or where we were, but I just remember she goes, oh, you're not real black. Hmm. And I said, what? And she was like, you're not real black. Like, you don't know, like, you don't have nappy hair. You don't have dark skin. You're not real black. Hmm. Can you define real black? I mean, That's I, it. okay. let me look that up real quick. I didn't yeah. know because, I mean, I'm pretty sure if we do DNA tests, we both come from the same genes, which is in Africa. Like, you know, yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't know what this real black word meant or phrase. And that really stuck with me um, up until now. Mm. And How did it make you feel? How, it how does it make you feel? It, it made me, at the time, I feel like it made me really question, like, well, am I real black? Like, what does that... Like, I really was really concerned. And I think I even went to my mom and I was like, what is real black? Like, are you not black? <laughs> you know, like, is there something that I need to know? I, it, at the time, it really, um, it really had me questioning a lot of things because at the time when I found out that my dad was adopted, mm -hmm. I was confused. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm mixed. Like, you know, okay. I was like, okay, because my dad looks very... Mm -hmm. He could come off as a white man, okay, you know. Pass. Mm -hmm. He could pass, um, but he will straight tell y'all, "I'm black." Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I am. So don't get twisted. Okay. Um, and you know, my parents very like were like, "No, you are black, and that's what you always have been, and that's what you are." Um, and I knew that. So mm -hmm. when time went on and this real black came on, I was like, "Okay, you're making me question everything all over again." Like I, I don't understand. Um, so. That was something that really um, struck me. Let me ask you now: Does it affect you now? Does it does it make did it did it make you sad at the time? Does it make you when you come into the company of other loved ones with color who are female? Does it make you apprehensive to talk to them, to approach them, to have it, relationships, or what? It doesn't make me apprehensive. It's just um, I always question how they view me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't view my mom my mom is like a a chocolate woman, you know. Uh -huh. I have chocolate women in my family, so it doesn't make me feel any way towards them. It's just like I wanna know I don't I hope you're not viewing me in right. a non black way. You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so in today, um it just makes me really question like I I want to feel that love. Like, I want you to know, like, I'm equal to you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? As far as that race, like, we're all in this together. It's not like if, you know, Trump say, all the blacks got to go, but Man. the license and say, that's not how it goes. You know it's what right. I mean? Like, that's right. it's, it's not going to go like that. So, um. What do you think's driving that behavior? Society. Very much. Um, I actually watched these documentaries. I don't know if you've probably seen them. Um, one was called for four colored girls, or 
no, for for light girls, and one was called for dark girls, mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's both good. of them talked about how each one of them felt, what they went through, um, society, everything. And when the dark girls were talking, they were speaking about the stereotypes for the mm-hmm. light girls were very stuck up. We think mm-hmm. we're better than you. Mm-hmm. We think we can get whatever we want because we have light skin mm-hmm. and we have curly hair and mm-hmm. we are all these things and we, we talk like this and mm-hmm. we're, we're a little dumb, you know? Like we want to be like the white girls. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. On the light skin girls, we're just like, they well, in the video, they were like, no, that is true. You know, we've never even stated that, but you you do have, and I've even talked to some light skin girls that do take on those stereotypes, and they really like, they don't. It's not that they um, feel that way, but they say like the fact that you are light skin, they feel that they can get a job versus somebody that's dark skin, that, and they yeah. use it to their advantage. Right, right, so right. it makes the ones like myself that don't take on these stereotypes, it, it makes us look bad, you know? It makes <laughs> us like, well, uh, she's doing that, but it's not me, so. Let me ask um, you a question, because as you know, I'm light skin. Right. We're, 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 <laughs> we're about to say. We're about right there, right, okay? So, yes, I understand exactly okay. what you mean. What, when you look at a very dark-skinned girl, what is your immediate impression of a dark-skinned girl that's different from a light-skinned girl? Most of the Are time, there it's any? beautiful. I love dark, I think dark skin is beautiful. I, to me, that is my own thing. I don't have, I, there's no stereotype that comes to my mind. Like, there are stereotypes with the dark girls. Like, they are very hard and they're very mean and all these things. I don't see that. Tougher? See a girl mm-hmm. or who, it could be a man, whoever. You just happen to have darker skin than me. That's okay. There's even um, Filipinos and um, <clears throat> uh, Simones that have darker skin than me. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I just see you as a person. I don't see stereotypes, but I know that's how they view me. And um, I've had so many comments towards myself, like, oh, a little light skin or da da da, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Because I know that for <laughs> me, being light skin as a man, of course, when a dark skinned man would come up, I would. I would have to get ready because I might have to fight him, and mm. it was going to be tougher. Mm. And I could, I could, I could fight a lighter skinned man a lot easier than I can fight that darker skinned man because he's tougher than me. Mm. So, I, so for the women, you all don't have that. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are some um, some light skinned women that do feel like that, like uh, she dark skinned, like you know what I mean? Because, uh-huh. uh, like I said, I've spoken to some of them that take on these stereotypes they mm-hmm. take on the ones about the dark skins and their own self and i'm just not with that i need to know you for you i you are a person just like i am you get to know me and i get to know you there's no um i just go off of what society says what is society doing to drive this you think make people like this Oh, if you not see the magazines, the commercials, the shows, um, you know what I mean? So it's it's everything. It's, you just got to look around and, you know what I mean? And I'm still even finding out, you know what I mean? I'm still noticing. My teacher showed us this Dove, um, this Dove uh, commercial picture thing or whatever, and it was saying... Um, before and after, and the dark skin just happened to be on the before side, mm-hmm. and the light skin happened to be on the after, or it was a white girl, actually, yeah. on the, um, on the after, after side. using uh-huh. the soap. And it was, it was, you know, they were hugging, and, you know, it didn't look like it was saying anything. Mm-hmm. But, but if you take subliminally... It's really saying, like, Subliminally, you know I mean? so yes. Society plays a big role in this, and... I guess if you want to take it back to old slave days mm-hmm. and you in the house and you know how you feel, all of it. Just and that's, everyone, ve- that's you know, very true. T- keeps that in their mind. And for those that don't really know the history or don't really know everything, they take on that. They mm-hmm. just say, oh, you better. You think you better because mm-hmm. you, you were in the house. And, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, well, in, well, in my, you know, in my time, 
the lighter skin because you're less of a threat. Don't you say yeah. All right, don't you talk about your time. Don't you? <laughs> no, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> because you were less of a threat, they got the better job, so they was able to move uptown. The darkers did kind of have have some feelings about that. And, of course, that washed over onto us. Wow. So... Spiritual aspects, okay? We're, 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 we're wrapping it down. Okay? Do you consider yourself uh, a person of faith? If so, in what tradition? Um, yes. Um, and tradition means like Christian. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm not say just getting into church. <laughs> like, um, I, I believe in God. I go to church, um, mm-hmm. but I've just started reading the Bible, and um, mm-hmm. you know, for a while, I mean, I think everybody, maybe not everybody, but I think maybe kids my age, mm-hmm. um, and when I was younger, go through that whole question, like, well, how do we just get here, and you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, so I went through that whole phase, and I uh, was like, I I don't know if I believe in God, but I, I don't know what to believe in, and uh-huh. you know what I mean, but... When you do that, that's taking a risk just to kind of be freelancing and like, well, I just I just popped up here one day, <laughs> you know. Um, so of course you need to, or I felt like I needed to believe in a higher power. I do believe that there is a being that is making everything possible. So, um, so yeah, I believe I do feel like I'm a person with faith because I the things that have happened in my life and people around me. I mean, I don't know if that would just happen on a day to day, you know. So um, I do believe. What would you, what do you what would you wish that you would hear from a religious leader or religious people in general? Is there anything that that in your in your knowledge or in your when you do go to church or whatever is there anything that you would wish that you that they would be saying speaking to you or on in terms of racism. In terms of racism? Yeah. Or what you've been through? Maybe just, um, I mean, because, you know, when the preacher's up there preaching, Mm -hmm. they're getting going. They, like, you know, (laughs) they have a way. We were watching Joe Osteen last night, and, you know, Joe Osteen, I recently found out, he got caught for his lies, so I didn't know that. That he what? He he gets caught for some lies sometimes. (laughs) I didn't know. But he has a way of, you know, speaking. So I think <laughs> preachers um, have that voice uh, to speak. Um, so I think in terms of racism, I think as of right now. What would you, and, what would you want Joel Osteen to say right now? Oh, Joel Osteen, I don't know if he would have much of a move. <laughs> but um, if, if he, if, if, you, he, if he could say something, if you could have him say mm-hmm. something, since that's who you watch. No, I, I just turned him on last night. He just happened to come on last night. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> but um, if it was Joe Osteen or just any preacher or just anyone, yeah. um, on the topic of racism, I think um, just come together. I'm very much of just love everybody and, you know, get to know everybody for who they are, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's the best thing that... Anybody, any motivational speaker, um, teachers, or, you know, anybody that has somewhat of a voice over others can just tell others to love each other. So, And if you were so empowered, what changes would you make to our current society in regards to race relations? Hmm, I don't know. That's a lot of pressure on one person. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, it's all on you. I don't know. I guess try to educate people more. Um, you know, I've learned a lot from uh, Dr. Brown. Um, so I guess just try to bring what she's brung to light into me um, to others and just, you know, say it's your choice. Do what you okay. feel is best, but would hope that people would. Um, See the better side, okay. if that makes any sense. Okay. <laughs> well, it sounds it sounds like we're about to, about to wrap it up, and so uh, are there any parting, closing words that you would like to express that you have not? Um, any closing words I haven't expressed? Um, 
I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> That's what you need to know. <laughs> and and with that, we're going to uh, close the interview with Miss Tierra Graves. This is Barry Burns, the interviewer, signing off. <laughs>